Hi, I'm Angie Kellen, and this is Shop Talk with Aki Fujimura. Aki is the CEO of D2S, and D2S is the managing company sponsor of the eBeam Initiative. Hello, Aki. Hi, Angie. Let's start talking about SEMI and the recent annual report that they came out with. We talked about the photo, photo mask market for 2017, and I noticed that they reported some record revenue of $3.75 billion. Yeah, 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 it's great. It's, uh, it's amazing. And we've been, uh, the mar mask market had been kind of stuck at uh, inflation adjusted $3 billion for many, many years, uh, maybe 15, 16 years. And it, it, that's despite the semiconductor market growing. So it's been a little bit mysterious why that's going on, but uh, it's great that it's finally, uh, uh, you know, getting the recognition that it really deserves. Well, that's my question is, what is it that you think is affecting the growth in this photo mask market? Yeah, so uh, uh, it's been going on for a while, so it's kind of a mystery why all of a sudden it's taking off. But uh, there's definitely an, uh, a trend to have the leading edge masks become more expensive. As you go to the lower nodes, um, you need more masks per layer. You need more masks for the entire wafer set because you have more levels of uh, interconnect. And uh, each of the critical layers, the, the, you know, the finest layers at the bottom, uh, they require more and more processing. So each of the masks are more expensive because they take longer to write and the more repairing you have to do and it's just much more processing. Um, and um, there's been more of them. So um, uh, it's also guided by the semiconductor industry overall uh, doing better too, especially at the leading edge nodes. Um, in addition to that, IoT and other uses of the more trading edge nodes Nodes, and that's been going up too, so uh, that also increases the, the demand for masks. So I think all of these things are uh, coming together to increase the uh, demand for masks and the value of the entire mask market. Um, but I think uh, the trend is going to continue. Uh, it's going to get even bigger, uh, especially as the industry transitions to EUV, because um, when you go to EUV uh, lithography, uh, you need less masks per layer than you need for 193 immersion technology, but each EUV mask is much, much more expensive. Some have reported like eight times um, more than one 193i mask, and of course that's going to normalize over time as EUV matures, but uh, still um, EUV masks are probably more expensive than the number of masks that you can reduce by. So um, I, I expect uh, this trend to continue, uh, which is great. Uh, the the uh, semi report also says that uh, it's expecting more than $4 billion by 2019, and, uh, and I believe that that makes sense. Very exciting times they are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Now, over the last three years, the eBeam Initiative has sponsored the survey for the photo mask market, kind of at the technology level. What are your plans this year? Yeah, we plan to continue, and uh, it's been very well received. Uh, thank you for everybody's support on that. Um, the uh, trends in EUV, the trends in multi-beam, these are things that we should see not only in the perception, but also in the facts as we look back at what happened in the last year. So both of these things I'm expecting to be able to see that in this year's survey. We'll see what happens. Um, in July and August is uh, when we do the survey every year, and then we report uh, on the results for the first time uh, at the SPIE Photo Mass Technology Conference conference that happens in Monterey in September. So we look forward to that. Yes, we definitely are looking forward to that. Mm. Now, I know in April, um, the Photomass Japan event was held in Yokohama, mm. and I understand it was the 15, or the 25th celebration. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Did they do anything special for that? Yeah, there, were, there was a, a special session and a, a celebration that uh, also, uh, uh, the special session were papers by uh, various uh, uh, notables, uh, luminaries in the industry, and uh, they celebrated some of the past figures, you know, the, the really famous people, um, and also uh, they celebrated technologies um, in uh, what all had to happen over the last uh, 25 years and beyond. Uh, the mask market's been um, incredible. 
uh, in how it progressed and how it's uh, uh, kept up with Moore's law and, and uh, the amount of new technology innovation uh, that happens. Uh, and it's not just innovation, it's innovation that's brought all the way to product where quality is an absolute must, right? You know, inventing something new and making it great and making it work all the time is really hard to do. And the mask market's consistently done that and it was a celebration of that. that it, it was really fun. Well, fantastic. Well, now you had mentioned that you had presented some really exciting news that was actually based on the Global Semiconductor Association's tracking of investments in semiconductors. So what was the exciting news? Yeah, so, um, you know, we're in the Silicon Valley here, but, uh, you know, we don't produce silicon anymore. We design them. But um, uh, uh, startup funding, of uh, semiconductor companies had been really difficult, almost non-existent, as long as the EV initiative has been around in the last uh, eight years. Uh, so uh, uh, it was really great to see that for the first time in eight years, now we have a significant uptick um, in number of investments. And I would say it, it, it's fair to say that nearly all of it, if not actually all of it, is a deep learning investment. Um, so uh, both in the kind of silicon uh, tensor cores um, uh, for uh, specifically handling the deep learning technology um, and also uh, supporting that kind of an infrastructure with IP or whatever. And so uh, it, it's really great to see uh, that the semiconductor market overall, uh, particularly using the leading edge technology nodes, um, uh, is uh, growing too. Well, Speaking of deep learning, I know you had interviewed Steve Tighe of Xperi mm -hmm. for one of our Perspectives videos in this edition of the Fine Line Video yeah. Journal. And uh, it became kind of a, a great tutorial for deep learning, so it was right. fantastic. So I'd like to know what your perspective is on deep learning and the semiconductor segment. Yeah, and Steve has a long history in machine learning in particular since the 1980s on uh, various EDA efforts, and some drug discovery kind of efforts, and also he did own his own startup on a, uh, a semiconductor company in Tabula. So he has a very wide background, but uniformly uh, what's, uh, uh, what's been a characterization of Steve's effort, uh, efforts and has been uh, the use of machine learning as a competitive differentiation um, uh, factor. And uh, uh, he's recently been doing a lot of deep learning work, in particular a subset of machine learning. Um, and uh, uh, he's uh, uh, found it to be a, a, a total breakthrough uh, in software technology. I believe that too. Um, I believe that uh, anything that's using software, whether it's at a... Uh, a Fortune 500 big company, uh, whether your business is uh, selling something on the web or selling something in brick and mortar or whether you have uh, 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 big data or you don't have big data, um, especially in technology, especially in our industry, and I think deep learning is a major discontinuity, uh, major discontinuity meaning both an opportunity and a threat. If your competitor does it first, you could be in trouble. If you do it first, you could be in really great shape um, in taking market share. Uh, so I think deep learning is a, is a very important technology. Uh, Steve does a great job talking about that. Uh, so please take a look at the video. Well, definitely on that note, I want to thank you for taking your time to interview with me and share your insights with us. And I also want to thank all of you as well. And like Aki said, I encourage you to take a look at the video. It's part of our Perspectives segment that's part of this edition of the Fine Line Video Journal. So thank you very much. And that's all for now, and we hope to see you next time.